you are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire YouTube wrestling community, and I'm one of your hosts, Juanzo. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leck. And together we are Rope Break. Break. How's every single one of you tonight? We're ready to talk about AW Dynamite a little bit later than usual. And you know, like Jean Paul said to me, it's like, oh, we actually gave a chance to NXT. What did they do? They let us all down, and Dynamite actually gave us a really legit show. So that's why, <laughs> I mean, we're going to talk about everything. With all the love and support, you know, that we feel for AEW, I think it was a really good Dynamite. And Jean Paul, you have something uh, interesting info to tell us about Tony Khan sending a tweet or something? Yeah, you know, before this, he was, uh, this night, he was like, oh, tonight's going to be a big shift of power. Obviously, you know, it was just, you know, coming off of everything happened at full gear. So it's like, okay, you know, what's, you know, what's going to be, you know, what's the future? He's like, a big shift of power will happen tonight. And we have a lot planned for the future, like a lot more legitness and everything. You know, that's just using rope breaks terms, but like to sum it up, he's like, it'll be more legit. So it's like, okay, let's see. And then, you know, they have the show, which was pretty good. There was only one or two little things that's like, eh, but you know, no show is perfect. You know, besides NXT UK. No, oh, even, yeah. that, even that show, I, you know, no, there's no show that's perfect, but this was really good. And, you know, I think it was even better because of how shitty NXT was. And if this is the trend, if NXT doesn't pick up, which I think they will when Balor and everybody comes back. But NXT now is like, hey, you know, you got to step up the game, too, because, you know, yeah. Dynamite was good. Absolutely. And like you said, like Jean-Paul, like we did the NXT review and the Kings of NXT welcome a new North American champion, Jean-Paul, like. Uh, he's really upset. I'm, I'm kind of like still in shock about what they did with like Leon Ruff. I, I thought it was like a pretty funny joke, but you know, it actually is not a joke. It's actually serious. So we'll see what happened with that. But like, don't forget to check that out. Like Pat McAfee is actually saving a little bit of NXT because like you said, Jean Paul said something in the NXT UK review that is really interesting. If NXT will be one hour, maybe it will be a lot better than what it is right now. And maybe they will be able to beat AEW so a lot of weeks because this week also they lost. So, you know, don't forget to check the review, Jean Paul. Let's talk about, like, the first match on, like, AW Dynamite. Matt Seidel against Brian Cage, you know. This was not for the F, the F, the Fuck the World or the FTW Championship, but this happened to be a really great match. Good showing for Brian Cage, especially because this is how you should, you know, portray Brian Cage. He came out with all this pump, with all this hype from Impact, you know, the world champion. I mean, he lost to Tessa. We remember that. <laughs> we always remember that. But in the end, like, you know, all these good promos with Tess, like he was going to be John Moxley. We all thought he was going to be the new AEW world champion. That didn't happen because Tess threw in the towel. But this, at least, he was a good showing. And then maybe this is a shift for what can happen to Brian K. Jumpo. Yeah, no, and I think because they're they're clearly coming after Darby Allen too. Because before this great match kicked off, I really liked this. I always say Dynamite usually starts off with a really good match. They did that here. Taz was saying, "Oh, Brian Cage's opponent tonight, Matt Seidel. He's kind of built like Darby Allen." Darby Allen was sitting, you know, up in the the bleachers or whatever, watching this. So they're pretty much saying like, what he's going to do to Seidel is the same thing like Ricky Starks or Brian Cage, whoever Team Taz is going to do to the new TNT champion. So you see that that feud is obviously still going on. And, you know, to jump ahead, we get the match for next week. Uh, Cody Rhodes and all them is, you know, they're going to be going against. So you still see that Team Taz feud is there. But this was a really good match. I like this. I like Matt Seidel. You know, we all remember that bot shooting star. And it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But well, I mean, Matt this Byrne, for the ones that remember yeah. WWE, that was his introduction to AEW. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so this, this was really good. I like this match. I like Seidel. I like Cage. How it's just, yeah, he sold for Seidel. But, you know, anytime then it's just like he was able to, you know, overcome calm it's just like one big move like i think he had a clothesline and jim yeah. ross even said like one big move is all it takes for this guy to get the advantage and it was really good i like you know how he can sell for the poison rana even at brian cage's size he can still you know jump backwards and sell that move and it was really good i like side l but clearly you know who was gonna be the winner here he hit the drill i think it's the drill press slam or something like yeah, that the drill hit, jump ball. Drill yeah, the, yeah yep. there you go he hits that one, two, three. Great opening match. Really exciting. Like you said, you know, when you make the comparisons in NXT UK, it's like, you know, let's see something boom right off the gate. Something really exciting. That's what always Dynamite gives you. If you want to see like high flying stuff, you know, this is where you come. So this was this was good. You know, I like this match. And also, Jean Paul, the good thing is like, like as you guys can see in the picture, like we got to see Darby Allen was in the one of the in one of the chairs and one of like the seats, and like he was still watching, and like you said, the rivalry still there, like the brand new TNT champion. So we got to see. This is not over yet. I mean, mm -hmm. do I want to see it over? Maybe, like, somebody different should be, like, feuding with them. You know, but I guess just Darby Allen, like, he should start defending his championship. 
But you said something important in the AEW Full Gear review. Please check that out. You said the money view right here is like Ricky Stars against Darby Allen. Two guys that are built absolutely the same. So they will probably give us like a five-star match if they let us do that. So it's good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm supportive of the whole idea. So then John Paul, we get to see Cody Rhodes. Cody mm-hmm. Rhodes, of course, like, ah, we get to see. And then, nah, 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 yeah, nah, we, you, nah, you, can li- you can literally go like to the bathroom and whatever before his entrance is even over. It's true. And, you know, I'm, I'm only hoping for like the first, like, the, because they only give you like a minute of the song and I'm good. Mm-hmm. He came out. He's like the first, before I do anything, John Paul. And let me congratulate the new TNT champion, Darby Allen. Hey, he gave us a great match. You know, and he said, John Paul, that he's not after that title anymore. He had his run. It's done with it. You know, other people need to go with it. And he kind of mentioned that he was going to go against MJF, John Paul. That, that's the kind of the case. Like, I got to resolve a feud that has not been resolved yet. And that's MJF. But before Cody can actually finish this promo that he had, he surprised for a girl. That we like we haven't seen before, at least I have not seen her. And that's Jay is Jade Cargill or Cargill. Jade and she's kind of like talking about uh, her promo is like, hey, you you're uh, you call yourself like a giant, and there's nothing really giant about you, man. <laughs> so that was cool. Like I was laughing about that. And then she said that like she actually knows a giant that is actually dormant, but because of Cody, he's woken up, and that gi- giant happens to be Shaq. <laughs> you know, like, so I'm like, okay, <sighs> why Shaq jump out of anybody? Why Shaq? But like, see, because they, happen. because they, they already wasted all their giants of Lance Archer and Jake Hager and uh, Wardlow, you know, Cody's beat them all. I don't know if he's yeah. actually beat Jake Hager, but you know, he beat the other two. So I guess they're like, who else do we have? Oh, a basketball player and nothing against Shaq. He's a big wrestling fan and everything. You know, we've seen that with WWE when he was with them and he always likes wrestling and stuff. So that, I mean, that's legit, but he's a big fan. Yes. Yeah. But it's like, you know, Hey, we're big fans too. Are we going to be on the show? No, it's like, you know, Shaq really doesn't have any business being in the wrestling ring. I mean, yeah, maybe, you know, but no, you know, we saw who the young books called out. It wasn't rope break. So it's like, okay, not yet anyway, but that's true. That's no, but I mean, this, I, I mean, the, I don't know, Shaq, to me, this is was one of the stinkers. And then you know, people are going to be like, oh, you just hate Cody. Well, if he puts himself in bullshit feuds, I was legit for Cody versus MJF, too. And then she comes out and it's like Shaquille O'Neal. And it's like, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, really? Yeah. And also, like, after that, like, she was like, you said, she was, she was a lot of swearing and everything. is like, keep your damn mouth shut or, like, you know, shut your mouth. Like, you know, shut Yeah, it's not the shit. Like, oh, you're a piece of shit or whatever. And it's like, yeah. Okay. So, like, <laughs> was, like, okay. And that brought actually Brandy out. Brandy mm-hmm. Allen, like you said, Brandy, normally she's composed, she's all together, she's really, like, polite. That came out, like, you know, the Brandy from the hood, and he's like, mm-hmm. that's the only time that you talk to my man like that, so we were kind of feuding, and then Cody was attacked mm-hmm. by, you said, Ricky Starks, and also, like, Brian Cage, and that, like you said, that set up, like, uh, the tag match that is going to be next week, because Darby Allen came to make the save. So it's good, like, like you said, we kind of, like, see that Cody is still involved in this Shaq thing. I don't like this because, like you said, it's not a wrestler. It's not anybody new. So mm, I don't want to see and, Cody involved in yeah. that. And also, I feel like, and I, maybe this is just Cody, and I don't know what, you know, I don't know who's deciding this, but Cody, like, think about it. How many things is he spreading himself over? Like, he, you know, it's like, oh, MJF, Shaq, and then now he's doing this with Darby Allen going against Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and Brian Cage. Like, unless you're going to have something where Shaq comes down and, like, throws him into the bleachers and, like, completely knocks him out and then Darby Allen loses, to me, then it's like, why is Cody in, like, three different feuds? Yeah, like, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's, feuds, yes. Yeah. Uh, he's taking away. And, and, that's nothing against, and, that, and that's not saying, oh, I, it's because I don't want to see him or anything. It's not that. It's just, it's like, if you think about it from a standpoint, it's like, you wrestle and you're in all these different feuds, you're probably not going to win any of them because, you know, how tired and beat up are you from yeah. wrestling, you know, one thing and then wrestling somebody else? And, you know, and then it's like, it's, you're not Roman Reigns. You don't need to be in every single segment. You just mm-hmm. need one segment of the show. That's all it needs to be. So please, you know, stay on your segment. So, you know, that was like the dynamite. I think it was decent, as, as like you said. Like, uh, Jade, a little different. We'll see what happens with her. Like, I think she's a wrestler. Maybe, like, you can clearly see that she's going to end up fighting Brandy. So we'll see what they do on and, that. And that movie. match, and, I mean, I, the only thing I know about Jade is that she's like a bodybuilder. Yes. Like the Camille from, you know, uh, NWA. Like NWA yes. Yeah, so I don't know how legit she is in the ring. And I, I'm going to just go out on a limb here. Hmm. I, I feel like it's a pretty big limb, so I don't think it'll break. She's probably not very good. 
Brandy's yeah. also not very good. So that is a match that I will watch, but I will not watch. I will, list, I will be on the TV, but I will not. For Jean Paul, it's not a match yeah. made in heaven. No. Let's call it for what it is. Exactly. Jean Paul, that's what it is. So Jean Paul, let's go to actually the best match of the show. It had color. It had a story. It had a guy that, like you said, Dustin Rhodes has been a guy that has done a few matches like this. Is like the Bunkhouse match, and that's mm-hmm. the natural nightmares. And yeah. or the nightmares like uh, Dustin Rose and QT Marshall and goes against the Butcher and the Blade and the Bunny was involved. So this was really good. I like this just because like the intensity that they had. I like the fact that there was color. I think like I like the fact that like for me in one of the few matches that I've seen so far from the Butcher and the Blade, they didn't look bad despite the fact that they lost. You know, at least oh, they no, they, yeah, they, yeah, they look legit. And I mean, that's the thing too. We're seeing them on aew well we're not because we don't watch it but like you know the fans are seeing them on aew dark where they're winning a lot and stuff but it's like you know that's not that doesn't really help them on tv when they lose and that but i mean this was really good though like you said despite the fact they still look very strong i like this match it was all over the place there was no rules it like the ref was watching these guys get beat up and you know everything and it was really good i like all the like you said the color was good. I think he, they were bleeding maybe a little too much, but I also really like how so the, a lot of them were... the blade. I think the yeah. blade was like... Black yeah, the black. blade and, and QT, but I like how they were wearing white because then when the blood gets on their clothing and stuff, that looked really good, like just oh, like yeah. visual. It looked pretty legit. Yeah, like for example, right here, example, like, ah, mm-hmm. da, like, you know, especially the blade. Look at that. And like you said, the whole story kind of like starts with the bunny, with uh, with mm-hmm. Ali, just because like Ali aligned, like, so supposedly she was dating the QT Marshall and all of that, but like, okay, dating him while she's married to the Blade doesn't make, make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> but, you know, it's like AW Universe. It's, there's a WW Universe. There's an AW Universe. But like, other than that, like, the match it was really great. Like, the Bonhouse match, this is the first time that it's actually four competitors. No other match that it's been like Bonhouse has only been like two people. But this was good. Like, you said, Dustin grabbed, like, he was actually wearing boots. For mm-hmm. them, yeah, the like cowboy boots. Shoes. Yeah, that was good. I and I like this. Did they hit a good? Was it a guitar or what? Did they hit over QT's head? That like, had to, yeah, that's a, like bled him open. I was like, where's yeah. Jeff Jarrett? That's legit. And I like <laughs> yeah. the. I like when they put dust. They hit their finisher. They put Dustin through the chairs. I thought that was actually going to be the end of it, but QT came in and made the save. So that was really good. And if, but uh, the only thing it was like, eh, is uh, as soon as Ali jumped up on the apron, I'm like, oh, here we go. Cause blade had the chair and he was going to hit QT. And I'm like, well, he's going to duck almost hit Ali. Then, you know, he, she's going to take the bump, which exactly what happened. She took the bump through the table. So, I mean, that was, it was cool to be like, it was cool to be like, yeah. it was cool to be like, oh, a chick went through a table, but it's like, really? Cause you knew it was just setting up the finish. But the one thing, I don't know if you saw, Dustin went to go hit the, the code red or the Canadian destroyer. Yeah, the, and the, and it wasn't good. It wasn't no, no, good. Oh, okay. The, that, that move, the guy who is taking it has to do the flip. You, you look at the butcher, he's big. They wrestled this match where they're beating the hell out of each other. He's exhausted. And that's not a little Rey Mysterio on your back. That's big six foot three, six foot four Dustin Rhodes. How, like, why would you be like, yeah, let's do this move? And then and, 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 I'm like, uh, Dustin, it, Dustin, it did look like so. Dustin yeah. should have never. That's the one I'm like, you you shouldn't have called that move. If you're going to do that, do it on the blade. Yeah. He's at least yeah, smaller. And, he's yeah. a lot smaller and he would have been more agile. Yeah, because I'm like the butcher. Like I felt, I felt bad for the butcher. I'm like, oh, like you know, he kind of looks like shit. But it's like you know, I don't blame him. <laughs> like, terrible. dude, yeah. yeah. But, you know, to summarize this whole thing, Jean Paul, violent, physical, and well executed mm-hmm. match. So this was pretty good. I like this where this is going. I mean, Dustin, they have to make him look good, and it's fine. Like you said, when he's in a match, at least he knows what he can do. Unless it's the Canadian destroyer mm-hmm. on the butcher. Yeah, and then I think what he just hit the cutter right on the blade. Yeah, he did the diamond cutter. And yep. he did the diamond cutter, and about, I think he no, he first whack him with like I think it was like maybe like a chain or something, mm-hmm. and then like he did like the diamond cutter. Oh yeah, he had the around his neck, I think. Yeah, and, then he, yeah, did, and yeah. Then he whacked them, and then he did the diamond cutter one, two, three for mm-hmm. the win. They I do like how win. they both like he had him in the pin, and then Dustin was like there. Oh yeah, he I like when they there for extra leverage. Extra yeah, pressure. absolutely right. So Jean Paul, let's go with the next segment, and that's the MJF's induction into the inner circle. This was good. Tell me a little bit about this, Jean Paul. You know, a few like funny jokes. You know, like the few members of the inner circle they're not really convinced that like he should be in it. But Jericho is like, well, you know, guys, I, I make that call. I said like, you know, he if he beats me, he's in. So you guys gotta respect my decision. So this was okay. I mean, MJF also like he was mentioning a little bit of John Moxley just because of like he feels that like if you would have had the inner circle with him then he would have never lost that match, or like, at least there would have been more people like complaining against the result of the match. So that was okay. 
And what do you think about this, Jean-Paul? I, I liked it. I like when the inner circle came out. You know, Jericho, of course, was just loving this. He's like, oh, this is legit. But is it is it Ortiz? Who hate or is it Santana? Which one? No, uh, Santana it is. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, Santana's like, this is bullshit. And like Sammy wasn't there, and they're like, Where's Sammy? And everybody's like, Oh, I don't know. Like he said he was gonna be here. Like, you know, we he's out of the hospital, so we don't know where he is. Uh, so then that was kind of like, okay, you see something's going on there. And I like when uh uh right before MJF goes to speak, you can see he's like <laughs> he's like tearing up and all choked up, and then oh, Jim, yeah, Ross, yeah. Jim Ross is like, if he cries, I'm leaving. <laughs> and then he starts, yeah. and then he starts crying, and I was like, yeah. "Well, Jim, like you're still yeah. here." But I mean, it was, it was good. It was, it was. I, I mean, I don't want to say it was good. It was, it, it did what it needed to do. I, well, I don't love this whole like inner circle thing unless it like unless this is what destroys the inner circle. And then okay, we get Santana and Ortiz legit back in the tag division. Jake Hager should be a monster, and Jericho should be doing his own thing. The inner circle was legit, but now it kind of turned into something that isn't. So I hope this is what kind of destroys it. And then all these guys can have their own like singles or tag team run because they, they weren't really doing justice to this faction at this point. So, I mean, I, I, I like it for that aspect to hopefully, like I said, it breaks them up. But this was good in the sense that it's like, where's Sammy and everything? But, you know, we'll see. I like when Jericho goes, hey. If this if this goes bullshit, it's on me. So it's like I think it's gonna be on you, Le Champion. Oh yeah, and, and you know how like I like how NJF, like you said, going along with the promo, he goes like, Oh, like oh in my long five years of a wrestler, mm. you know, I asked my daddy for a million dollars and he gave Oh yeah, me for a million. small loan of a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. really? <laughs> I'm like, see, like MJF is a great talker. That's the one oh, thing, yeah. you know, like MJF can pull out like any any, you know, segment like and, this. And there's also like that. Yeah, and there's the wild card of Wardlow too. Like, what's you know? I feel like there's gonna be something with him and Hager are gonna explode. That's gonna cause tension. And then, like I said, Sammy. You know, this the whole inner circle thing. That's why I like it because I'm like, I can. There's a lot of different feuds and the different ways that this you know egg can crack, so to speak. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. And then you know he actually pulled out and he said, guys, you know, to make the celebration even better. We're going to go to Vegas. So I have tickets for every single one of you and everybody. Again, we're Sammy, we're Sammy. So, you know, elite, elite delusion, all of that. Mm -hmm. So we'll hear a little bit later from them. Or, or like, you want to just do it now? It's like, you know, Sammy Guevara shows up and he's like, hey, guys. And it's like, where were you? <laughs> so, and he's, yeah, like, he's oh, like, I got an email to go to the beach. And they're like, the beach? What? And then MJF's like, dude, I sent you a second email and said to meet here. And he's like, dude, fuck you. No, you didn't. You're a piece of shit. And he's like, whoa, man, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then he like, Hands him the ticket, and he's like, you know, it's on me, man. So you see something I could easily see like that's his, the tension right there. Yeah, yeah, I could easily see his ticket flies him to like some bullshit place that's not Vegas or something like that. Yeah, we see the picture there. Everybody's hamming it up. Except see, we see the, the two on the left. Everybody's happy and like the ones that are upset, right there. Yeah, the two on the left. So I mean, it, it's it's good. I'm excited to see where this goes. And you know, next week we get you know the. You know what are they, the inner circles in Vegas, and I in won't be Vegas, like, yeah. and I won't be like, oh, this is bullshit, because if they do this the same way, kind of something like when Adam Cole went on his tour and was like, oh, Johnny Gargano, you're bullshit, like that was funny and stuff. So hopefully, this is kind of the same thing. We'll see. I uh, yeah, like like you said, it's a, it's a good stuff, and like you said, the tension. Probably if they turn Sammy Guevara like face, that would be cool because mm -hmm. like finally he can win those matches. Like you said, Sammy Guevara is a great wrestler, but he never wins. So now you can and that would be with, something of let's kind of say with Matt Hardy, right, Jumbo? Mm. Oh, along yeah. the lines of Sammy Guevara, we're talking about him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say, like, for him turning face, it would be cool if maybe, like, then he, the title, the TNT, goes to Ricky Starks, and then eventually, you know, it could go to Sammy Guevara as a baby. Oh, face. Yeah, that would be good, but like a good feud, let's say, mm. you know, for him also, like with MJF, and maybe he gets a win, and you know, boom. Sammy is gets kicked out of the inner circle, but he starts being on his own because Matt Hardy gave him like a big, big, you know, like support. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, you took me one of the greatest matches of my career. You know, it's a great rivalry. You took a lot of me, but you have a bright future. And because of you, I became a better wrestler. So like you can see that Matt Hardy like is closing the feud, but actually put him over, put him Sammy. Oh over. yeah, and and the one thing to touch on that: Do you think we're gonna see Hurricane Helms and? You know, gang grill in AEW, or do you think that was just a one off for the pay per view? So and be like, okay. it's one off for the pay per view, but Tony Khan said, you know, whenever it's needed, I'll bring them back because they did a great job. It's like we don't have anything for them as of now, but you know, the door is always open when it comes to like gang grill and Gregory Helms or the hurricane. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, Jean Paul, tell me a little bit about Scorpio Sky and Sean Spears. You know, Sean Spears going back with like uh, Tony Blanchard. 
So, like, it's good. I mean, do we really care because he's with FTR and with this? It should be the three of them, don't you think? Yeah, I, I don't know why we don't see something that they, they, you know, they come out. They should be like the triple threat. Just go like this. Yeah. Just do one of these. Be like, we're the triple threat. You know, yeah. like, ECW, come out. Be legit. I mean, they, they don't have to do the same hand signal. They can hold up three different fingers or whatever. But, you know, just it should be the three of them because they're all managed by Tully. And I understand when old school managers would, you know, like Slick or like Fuji or whoever, they would ha- manage a bunch of guys. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't all be together. So, I mean, I, I guess I get that. But the one thing I do like is Scorpio Sky is, is a legit wrestler. And, you know, Sean Spears got the win. He cheated. He had the manager, but that's his character. That's what he's supposed to do. They said he's on, a, if you want to quote Tony Schiavone, on 11 game, excuse me, 11 match. He said it two weeks in a row. Stop watching football and watch the best sport, <laughs> pro wrestling. No, he's on an 11 what's match. Soccer? Yeah. I mean, what's the, what's the soccer? Yeah, unle- unless you're watching Rope Break, don't watch soccer. But yes, no, yes. he's on an 11 match winning streak. So I like that they didn't break that streak here. And I mean, this is a decent feud. I guess the only thing I would like to see is if FTR isn't done because there's things where like, oh, they might be leaving, go to Japan. They just want to like touch down in every promotion, win gold wherever they go, which I mean, I respect that. It's kind of like, you know, the 3D and all those other teams. So that's legit. Like the, the Hardys, they do. You know, yeah, the, the Hardys teams, and stuff. So. Gold, yeah, I mean, I that, but if they are here, I, I wouldn't mind seeing like a six man tag where it's, you know, t- uh, Sean Spears and FTR going against. SCU because at least that makes sense. That's six guys. It's like, oh, we're a group, we're a group, and then you, you know, we're feuding. And so. and, you know, if like Tolly's plan is managing them, why can't just Sean Spears join? Well, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, I I like that, uh, you know, that, that I mean, him with winning and stuff, but we'll see. I mean, I, I mean, think they, they, they really don't know what they're gonna good, do. Like the tactic yeah. where he is, you know, he gave him like a thing. I don't know if it was brass knuckles, but he gave him something. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and then he beat him, and then right away, actually, we he landed with, with like, oh, yeah, because because uh, two of them were thrown in the ring, and then Sean picked the one up and like put it in the glove, and then Scorpio looked at it, he's like, oh, I'm not gonna use this to oh, cheat, yeah. and he throws it into the crowd, and as soon as he throws it, he turns around, and then Down Sean clo- clocks him, and then I like yeah. that, like you said, he punches him and falls on top of him, like, oh, it's done, yeah, and then like he got knocked out too, win. yes, and then- okay, so Jean Paul, you know, the young box. You know, they're being interviewed by, like, Marvez. So Marvez again, you know, you guys won the title. So it's legit. How do you guys feel about it? Hey, it's all good, Marvez. You know, don't feel don't feel bullshit. Like, I'm, we're sorry that we super kick you. We have the titles now. We're legit. So, like, it's all good. Don't be afraid of us. I'm sorry about our behavior, but we just needed to be a little edgy, kind of be the different young box. So they end up calling out who, Jean Paul? What's the name of them? Top, they call it Top Flight, which uh, they had a match on Dark, which it was funny because Jim Ross was like, I've never heard of this team. And then Excalibur was like, they just had a match on Dark on Tuesday. So it's just Jim Ross doesn't even watch Dark. So that's well, like, legit. Like, like, can anybody like watch Dark? Yeah, you know but, what I mean? but, but the thing is, like, you know, Top Flight, that's, hey, that's legit for them. I'm sure they're a legit high-flying team. So like, you know, that will be exciting. But, you know, what about power rankings? Why have them? Yeah, you know, like, they, they should be like, oh, who's the number one contender right now? Also, AEW does go by, like, the rematch clause. So, like, yeah. shouldn't the challengers be FTR also? But, you know, like you said, Jean-Paul, they know they have the... Yeah, maybe, maybe for, like, there's, leaving, you know, there's, there's rumors of FTR maybe leaving, so who knows? But, I mean, this match, I think, is next week, so that yes, could be pretty good. Right. But uh, the Bucks clearly aren't going to lose. So. Yeah, so, <laughs> the Bucks, you know, you know after, after... Unless that, there's a Leon Ruff. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, if they want to do the Leon Rob switch, you know, now it's not, not even Isaiah Swerve Scott. It's the Leon Rob switch. Mm-hmm. So absolutely right, Jean-Paul. So that's what happened with that. Let's talk about, like, the main few that we're going to have for the AW Championship match. First of all, we're going to hear about John Moxley. Like you said, we couldn't really hear him because we got a lot of echo, you know, a little bit of sound problems with the AEW Dynamite show. But, like, he pretty much said that, like, you know, he's the only guy that he's been able to beat Kenny Omega. And that was like a full gear last year. If you want to see the review, you can go check it out because Robert was already mm-hmm. on the on our way. So we were already, mm-hmm. you know, rocking. It, it's we in the already, archives. It's in the archives, yes. It's like the AW full gear review of 2019. So like he says that like it was a really great match. It was a great feud. They know each other. But he says, what will be even better? And it will be like, it only takes the best wrestler in the world to be like, you know, like one of the best wrestlers in the world in Kenny Omega twice. It will take him, you know, like, it's going to be, like, the greatest thing ever. It's going to be the best Dynamite show ever. So, you know, he says that. And, I mean, I believe him. And the one thing is, like, this time it's going to be in just a regular ring. You know, no toys. Mm-hmm. None of that. So, it's good. I, I like what John Moxley said. What do you think, Jumpo? 
Oh, yeah, this was really good. I, I, Moxley's always a great promo. And, I mean, everything he said is true to an extent until we hear Kenny Omega's promo. And we can just go into that right now. They're yeah. trying to track down oh, Kenny. Yeah. And they couldn't. They're like, oh, where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? Of course, it had to be the shittiest interviewer on the planet. Marvez eventually finds him outside. He's on the phone. And he's like, oh, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. John Moxley said this. You know, what are you thinking? You know, you're the number one contender. And he's like... People always said, like, oh, you know, when are we going to see the cleaner, the best bout machine, all this stuff again, the best wrestler in the world? He's like, I've always been that. But I took a step back, ready to take a step forward, ready to be legit. And he's like, oh, Moxley said he beat me? No, no, no. You look at my record, I've never had a match with John Moxley. The only yeah. time, he's like, that was a non-sanction. That didn't count. That does not go on the record. You did not beat me. And I, I really like that by Omega. So that's oh, yeah, good. And, you know, yeah. I like John Paul. I'm sorry that I'm calling you about Oh, no, you're good. You know what he said? I'm ready to be the best, the best in the world one more time. The best mm -hmm. wrestler in the world. I, I love that, and like you said, like the fact that there's no track. He said it, it, this time is going to be just a wrestling ring. He and I. Yeah, go ahead, Jumbo. Yeah, I mean, no, that, that I mean, that's pretty much all you need to take from this promo. Like he said, I'm going to be the best again. And you know, hey, he didn't beat me because Moxie's like, oh, I beat him. I'll beat him twice. It's like, no, you didn't even beat me once. So then that's kind of maybe I feel like Omega's gonna win here. Well, I mean, that's obviously I think well, that's the right choice. Omega, right there. Yeah, cool. Ome Omega needs to win. What December second? He needs to win. And you know, then that will be okay. You grab Moxley saying, "Oh, we're one one." Kenny can say, "No, I'm one." You know, for the soccer fans, one nil. You know, it's like okay, but but then it's like you know, then maybe they have a third match later on where Moxley might get the win. Not saying for the title, but just for kind of like this little mini like animosity kind of feud that they you know might be uh, built you know, in some long like, term. Outside of like, if you think about it, Jean Paul, all the feuds that we've seen in AEW, this probably is one of the best ones, if not the best. You know, because the match that they gave us, uh, like, full gear and everything and the expectation, they pull out a really great show. So, why wouldn't you go with the match that, like, gave you the most notoriety? Oh, yeah. Why and Moxley, like I think he's, is he the longest running champ now? Yeah. 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 So, I was gonna say, so with him, it's like, you know, who, who better than to drop the title to Omega? Like you said, the, the feud is good. If you love the violence and, you know, using all the toys and stuff, their match at full gear was for you. I know some people hated it. Some people loved it. It's, it's, always, a, it, yeah, it's always a mixed yeah. bag, but. Yeah, no, it was it was good, and I think this will be better because it'll just be wrestling, and then you, we can hopefully really see Kenny Omega kind of really turn the full heel turn, you know, the cleaner. cleaner and stuff. And then cleaner. with the Bucks, I mean, to me that will be a legit faction. So looking forward example, to this match. Why is he called the Cleaner? Oh, because he keeps like his cassettes and his CDs. That, and I, when Excalibur said that, I'm like, can a sniper's bullet just come flying through the fucking window and just? <laughs> that, 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 I'm that, like, like oh, really? Example, like, why is he the Cleaner? Because he uses Mister Clean every single day. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, why is he called the Cleaner? Oh, because he sends the chicks out with the brooms. Like, no, because it's like, oh, okay, like you know, I'm gonna clean you up. Like you know, this because is you know, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, thanks, thanks, Excalibur, for giving us the worst. I bet Jim Ross race. has, like, brain aneurysms just yeah, well, sitting next to that I mean, that guy. We, we shit on Excalibur, we gotta shit on, like, whoever made that call for Leon Ruff. So we're actually making mm -hmm. it even for both. Let's talk about Jean-Paul now. Taya Conti, Taya Conti going against Red Velvet. Red Velvet, we gotta say hi to our girl, uh, Lexi Gomez. Why? Because she's really uh, best friends with Red Velvet. So, you know, we gotta say hi. We hope that, like, Lexi Gomez is going to AEW pretty, pretty mm -hmm. soon. You know, we send all the love and support to our girl. You know, we're really happy that she's part of the family. This match was, like, decent, jump Paul. You know, neither one of them are, like... I mean, Red Velvet, I think, is, like, actually a better wrestler than Tay. You know, and it, it, it was okay. You know, for, like... We didn't see Hikaru Shida. We didn't see Nyla Rose. We didn't see one of, like, the main girls. So, this for here, like, a mini feud. You know, Anna Jay was right there. She's been actually teasing Tay to join the Dark Order. Um, I mean, the Dark Order, who's in the Dark Order? Nobody cares about the Dark Order. <laughs> no, Brody Lee's done. But I mean, what do you thought? What are your things about? This you think about uh, I mean, this was, you know, it, it, it was what Probably it was. Most, right? it, it was what it was. I didn't really like it. I'm not going to be like, oh, this Probably. was good or whatever. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. You know, they, what did they say? Red Velvet has like four years of experience and Ty Conti has like three or two. They only have like six or seven years experience between the two of them. It definitely shows, and they said, "Oh, like Tay didn't even like wrestling or really know what the fuck it was until 2016." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, okay, legit," and you're on TV, and I mean, it shows. And I don't like how Anna J is like, "Oh, you're my best friend," like, "Oh, we're legit," like we're just two blonde chicks, ah, duh. But then she's also like, "Oh, I'm in the dark order." Like you can't play both roles on TV. Oh yeah, and no, it's, it's like you know, it should be like. 
Yeah. yeah, it should be, you know, one or the other. And, you know, it's like, oh, join, you know, join us, join us. But it's like, what, like, it, sh- it shouldn't be like, oh, come on, join us. It'll be fun. It should be like, you abduct people. You're a cult. You know what I mean? But so, but they don't play the Dark Order gimmick how they should. But, I mean, this match was, it, it was what it was. I, I wasn't really invested in it. And, of course, Brandy Rhodes twice on television, you know, two different segments. You know, that's always legit for <laughs> like whoever, whoever, not me, whoever but, is, a yeah. friend, is a fan of Brandy, like you said, it's just like a little different. And Tay gets the win, you know, with the with the assistance of Anna J. I mean, Anna J. was trying to help her, but like Tay is like, no, 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 and she did like yeah, because she slid the chair in and she kicked the chair out. See, if you want to do something legit, have the the two of them feud. Have her yeah. be like, have her be like, I've tried to you know be your friend. I tried to help you out enough times. You keep turning down my help. Fuck you, and then have them feud. No, yeah, no, nope, they didn't do that. So, like, I mean, Anna J, like, is trying to, like, get Tay to, like, be in the Dark Order. We'll see. Like you said, I'm much rather would like to see that rivalry, like you said. If I win, you join the Dark Order. If you lose, I leave you alone. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, if I yeah, lose, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Alone, like, like that, it will be better. But, you know, Jumbo, that's what we have uh, so far in the show. Let's go to finally the main event, because the main event was actually a really great match, a rematch. But before that, we got to see Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston came out, and he was talking about, yeah, I, I tap, I, I said I quit. So anybody, <laughs> and I love when he comes down there, like you know, the fans are che- chanting his name and stuff. I love he's like, I know what my name is. Shut the hell up. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, let me let me speak. Yeah, and then he's like, like, he's like, oh, you stupid marks with your this is awesome fight forever. He's like, where are your bullshit chants? You know what I mean? It, I mean, I love just when how he can control the crowds like an old school heel. Uh, he oh, just yeah. like tells tells them off. You know, he doesn't just say, oh, like I love when people cheer me. No, he he'd rather have people boo him. So, I mean, he's legit, and like you said, you know, the match is, you know, he was clearly in the side of Pentagon, he was on commentary for this, which, what did you think, before we get to the match, just with the thing on, with him on commentary, with him, like, really, like, Excalibur was trying to be, like, the Michael Cole, and be like, oh, I'm gonna, like, stand up to the heel who's on commentary, when it's like, really, Eddie Kingston will fucking kick your ass, like, oh, you know yeah. what I mean, it's like, really? Yeah, I, I didn't like that. I mean, like, and, you know, how, like, he kept bugging, you know, like... Oh, and even oh, Shivani, too. Shivani would be like, oh, well, you know... Uh, wah, wah, wah. But it's like, oh, but then you were a pussy to the Young Bucks, but this guy, you're going to stand up to him? Yeah, you know, and that's... The <laughs> you know, like, like, really? Like, dude, like, Eddie Kingston will stab you in the, in a back alley. Like, the yeah. Young Bucks will take you to church. Like, they're, yeah. they're two completely different people. And, and that, But, see, that's what I mean. The perception of Eddie Kingston in everybody's eyes is not that. At least, you know, for we know he, he can beat you. He can kick your ass anytime he wants, but I guess for them, they don't see him in that light. And that, yeah, that, that's that what I mean. I'm like, me I'm like, yeah, okay. That well, that's bothers me. Yeah, the young bucks in their eyes are the road warriors. So. Yes, yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't agree to that. So that's what pretty much like I I didn't really like that, but like you said, pretty much uh, Kingston was all, all like rooting for Penta. Mm. You know, that was like pretty much the whole thing. I just, you know, like, but like he kept saying, oh, they're brothers. They're not. I mean, like, I don't, you know, like blood brothers. I mean, they're best friends. Yeah, but they're not brothers. So, oh, is his brother? He's like an older brother. I'm like, shut up. You know? Well, I mean, that's why that's like Kane and The Undertaker. You know, you got to just be the gimmick. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's, I guess, like, that's what, like, the, the story goes by the side of that. What a great match they gave us. Mm-hmm. Oh, what that's why I, I love, like, when you have a Lucha guy versus non-Lucha, sometimes it's legit. Sometimes it looks kind of bullshit, but when you have two luchadors going against each other, it's usually going to be magic. And it's, oh, I love, like, you know, when you see people do enziguris and stuff, you see like this. Like, oh, I, I got a cut. I don't want to get kicked. Phoenix just, like, boom, takes an enziguri to the side of the head. There's no hand blocking it. I mean, just everything is legit that they do, and it was really good. And early on, we see Penta, he grabs the mask of Phoenix and starts ripping it. So it's like, yeah. what the hell? And, of course, Excalibur's like, that will be a disqualification in Mexico. I'm like, dude. It's not yeah. Mexico, bro. Shut up. Shut up, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, you're, yeah. like, like every, every time he speaks, I'm like, just, just shut up. But, you know, <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was like, good. Most negative than positive in my book. Yeah. yeah I gotta agree. I gotta agree. But, I, I, like I mean, it, it was good. Then Phoenix fought back, and Penta was just really aggressive to Phoenix. You know, he hit the, I think he hit the Cane- or the Mexican Destroyer on the outside, and he hit, I think, the Package Pile Driver on the apron. Or yeah. he had some kind of move on yeah. the apron, and he, and that's even when Kingston was like, "All right," he's like, "All right, man." He's like, "You know, take it easy on him." Like, "All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah." Because like you know, he's like, "Well, make sure you take care of your brother." <laughs> yeah, because he was like, "Oh, Penta's gonna kick his ass," but then when he really started beating him up, he's like, "All right, Penta, maybe dial it down a little bit. Maybe don't kick his ass that bad." So then you I... even saw that Penta. This it's like, where's this aggression? Like, turn him loose in the singles division and let him. You know, where these guys should have gold. We've been saying it since day one. The, ah, the, now the, these they, do they, not they, have gold. 
you know, even like if if they're not having goal, you know, together, why don't they have goal on their own? You mm-hmm. know, they should either one. And there was champ. Fighting. Yeah, Phoenix. They were singles champs in their, you know, in previous in promotions. Yeah, in yeah. And yeah. they were, you know, tag champs everywhere else. So it's like yeah. you know, you they got to do these guys justice, and I think they're slowly doing that because recently you got. We have to admit. We have been seeing them featured more towards the main event. And, you know, tonight here in the main event, I believe Phoenix and Pentagon were the main event the other time they wrestled. Yes. And then yeah. Kenny, you know, was the main event with them as well. So th- this was really good. I liked even at the end after all this, you know, Phoenix, he makes the comeback and starts. He rips the mask of Penta even more so. And yeah. I thought it was you because you had the same hair and everything. I'm like, is that one underneath there? Like, that's legit. But yeah. no, it wasn't. It was, you Don't know, Penta. Saying it. Yeah, but uh, no, no, I mean, no. this, yeah, th- this was really good. And but of course, you know, who got the win here? Penta. So yeah. that, like you said, can Phoenix win? Like you know, he wins, but then when he wins, he doesn't even get that the opportunity. Because it's like even you know, make it more even. You know, if, if they're bros, if they're as good, you know, it's like ninety ninety in the game, right? Both of them are ninety. One of one time he can get the win, the other time I get mm-hmm. the win. You know, Jean Paul is like you don't have to win all the time, Jean Paul. Can I get one win? Mm-hmm. You know, but like strong, we said, I guess if, if you want to if you want to be like technical, like Phoenix did beat Penta the last time, but you know he Penta still got the match with Kenny. So then this was kind of like a revenge thing. I was like, oh, you know, I'm really going to rub it in your face. And it's because you you can maybe see Kingston pulling the strings because yeah. he's, he, you know, he's like, oh, you know, these are my people because he even yeah. said on commentary, too. He's like, oh, yeah, like we like to fight. We like to fight within each other and it's fine. But then we saw, you know, the person who originally was like, no, Lucha Bros, you're on my side. Yes. And then yeah. after the match, Pat ah, came out. Ah, there he is. The bastard returned. So this was good. I like this because, you know, clearly he's going after Kingston. It's like, oh, you know, Death Triangle. You know, I was. Like, like you, you know, you came in here, you stole my guys. No, no, no. Death Triangle's back. So this is good. I hope to see him versus Kingston or like some, you know, you get a combination. Maybe eventually Death Triangle reforms and then you have the three of them going against Kingston and the Butcher and the Blade. So you have, again, this is like the inner circle thing. There's a lot of different matchups you can do with this. So I really like this. Good close to the show. Oh, yeah, it was great. And like like you said, he kind of kind of cut a promo. And like what, what we know so far is like he's going to be in America for a few weeks, jump Paul. Then he's going to go back to the United Kingdom uh, for Thanksgiving. And then he's going to come back. So we'll see a little bit. He's probably going to have a mini feud with Kingston. And then he's going to go away for a few weeks, you know. Something like till the holidays or something. And then, boom, they're going to bring him back. Because he's going to be featured heavily, you know, in next year. He's going to be one of, like, the integral pieces. When it's going to be AEW for next year. Because you know how good, like, Pac is? I mean, like, a heel. That, so far, they haven't done any injustice. But I think that, like, he could easily be the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. He was supposed to be like in the title match, remember, before oh, yeah. everything happened and then he couldn't perform. He was supposed to be like fighting for that championship and it's inauguration. But I, I, I really like this, this mini feud with Eddie Kingston because Eddie Kingston so far ever with a feud with Moxley, like he's come out in like a better character for what I thought he was. At least. Oh, I agree. Oh, no, I agree 100 percent. So that's why I said I'm really looking forward to this. So, you know, Dynamite, Tony, what we said at the start of the show, Tony Khan said this is the shift of power. We'll see. This episode, it was good. Let's see what they do next week. If you give me three, four weeks in a row of this quality, then I'll be like, all right. Oh, and you're, we already promised. If Rhea Ripley wins the NXT Women's Champion, we go back to our Dynamite. So then, we, then we are all in. And yeah, well, we would love to be all in in Shirai, but you know, uh, Devils is <laughs> somebody else is in, in in that situation, so we don't need to go there. Jump Paul, remind everybody where they can find us in the social media world. You can find us on Rope, the Rope Break on Facebook, the OG Rope Break on Twitter, the original Rope Break on Instagram. Of course, the home for the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the original Rope Break right here on YouTube. Mm, yeah, Jean Paul, you know, the meat and potatoes. And don't forget, please subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. We always put content. We'll come back for you guys soon for like SmackDown. Also, like we have Turning Point with Jean Paul Egg, you know, kind of like wrapping up 2020. You know, we have Survivor Series next week. So we're going to just, like, again, wrapping up this year. We hope that like 2021 is even better, but we need your help for all of that. So there's only one more thing that is left to say, Jean Paul. And that is. Uh, uh,